Hi everybody, Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the wet and snowy sometimes off-grid project. Today I am doing fall cleanup and uh, winterizing the property. It's funny somebody asked me that the other day. When are you going to start winterizing? Today I'm winterizing. Um, I'm cleaning up out here although I still have a little bit more to do I uh, will show you what I've been up to I need to put the quad away it needs a carburetor clean out radiator patched up and a possibly impeller for the uh, like water pump so that's gotta go and now well, let's start over here I have put away the camper for the winter. I closed it down, sealed it up, and put away all the camping gear. I got to put some air in the tire before I fully close it up and uh, call it done for the winter. But I've got it sealed up. Now, I got out over here the garden tractor I brought home the other day. I am working on getting it running. The end, I got all the tires aired up and I'm waiting to see uh, if they're going to hold air. That one didn't. So I'll put some uh, stop leak in there. And that one didn't. Actually, they, maybe I just didn't air them up very hard. No, that one's hard. So, and that one's hard. So these two held air. And these two didn't. So I'll have to put some uh, stop leak or what do you call that, um, tire seal in there on these two. With lawnmower tractor or garden tractors, lawnmowers, I don't have any problem with sealing the tires like that with that goop. Engine turns over but it's not firing. And of course the battery's dead. But I need to get a car over here because my small boat battery just wasn't doing it. It wasn't kicking it hard enough. I pulled out an old snowblower that I brought with me from New York. Now, I had quite a few carcasses of snowblowers in New York and I kept what I thought was the best of them all. It's an old Arians. Now remember, I was rebuilding an Arians snowblower with a white engine. It had a white engine on top. I didn't get that one done, sadly, because we left New York. I sold that with junk all the all the uh, small engines went to uh, a couple guys. They bought everything, which answers the other question. Somebody had mentioned all the weed eaters I had. Um, I sold it all in one lump sum. Some guys came and got the works. I kept though what I thought would be the best. Now, this is amazing. I didn't know if this ran or not. I brought it all the way to Michigan from New York. Never tried it. I bought it for twenty dollars, scrap metal price. Never tried it. Never did a thing with it. Here it sat all this time. I thought, and so did probably the previous person, that this was broke. It spins freely. Okay? I don't know if that's broke or not. Because when the engine turns, that does spin. I don't know if this is meant to free will, or if there's something broke inside. I have to look it up. But when I turn the engine by hand the bl the uh, blower spins and the blades seem to be spinning now it's hard for me alone at this time to go over there and pull it with one hand Melanie's too busy today and get up here and look on the front with my head to see if it's spinning but I thought I saw it spinning but the coolest of all just to see what happened I sprayed some carburetor cleaner up in there and I pulled the thing, the handle, and the thing ran. It actually didn't stop running, although there's no gas in the tank. So I must have sprayed a lot of cleaner in there. So I actually shut off the uh, the kill switch before it stopped running. I didn't want to do anything because I don't. I didn't even check the oil or anything. I just like I didn't expect it would run. Not like that. So this is awesome. So I might have a snowblower today. Now um, over here. I still have some chairs to put away. I've got a tarp that I'm trying to set up over the lumber mill that blew down on me. 
Um, I'm not allowed to put a permanent structure here because they told me I would have to move the two sheds and have 30 feet of space in here to put uh, a shelter over my mill. Yeah, our town wants you to have everything 10 feet apart. So the problem is that I can't put a proper structure in between here. Um, they said just casually, well, move the sheds if you want. <clears throat> well, not so easily done. <laughs> not at all. They're full. So they sit. There they sit and there they stay. So I've been trying to rig up a tarp over the mill in such a way that it doesn't blow away, but yet it's a non-permanent structure. It's just a tarp. But yet, it'll protect my mill so I can work in the rain. <laughs> Failure so far. So that's what that is. Now over here, I cleaned up the sheet metal. There's roofing over here that I'm going to be using for some projects. Um, actually, some of it's going on my wood piles, which will answer some other questions from people about covering the wood piles. There were two pallets of sheet metal roofing here next to my electronics lab for a while now and I put the best of the sheets the lightest and biggest and best of the sheets on top I put some stuff on it to stop it from blowing away in the wind but now those are going over my firewood piles with some heavy scrap wood on top to keep them from blowing away now I've got to move these 21 foot uh, 2 by 6s over next to the trailer because over there I will be building a porch. I'm going to um, cover the the porch. Uh, I mean the porch is covered and I'm going to just put a raised floor in there. Um, since it's already covered and it's already got the framing and everything else I asked, got permission, all I got to do is just put the floor. That's all I'm doing is put a floor in a pre-existing pre structure. And it sort of has a floor so all I'm doing is changing the way the floor is. So this will be the new floor in there. And then for the winter, I want to somewhat close that off. And then I'll be able, to, we'll be able to use that uh, wood cook stove in there. So I don't know if you want to watch me haul two by sixes. I don't think it's going to be very cute or pretty anyway. But uh, I'm going to get all these out of here now and try to carry slash drag them over to the trailer so they're out of the way of the mill and then um, I'm also going to put them on a pallet and sticker them so they don't get wrecked and then I will hopefully yet today I'm not sure I want to build a ramp up to the mill and then I can roll logs up onto the mill and uh, and start really processing some serious firewood so I have to cut the stump off low I have to clear out those pallets eventually because the idea is I'm going to build a sled when the garden tractor is running and be able to pull logs right up into here, drive right on through and then out again, leave the log here and with a cant hook roll it on up the ramp and process it on the mill. So that's the plans and that's what's going on so far. Um, if it, we, oh look there's some blue. Haven't seen that at all today. If it uh, gives me some clear weather, I will continue to record what I do, but it's been really messy today, to put it simply. So here we go. I'm going to clear this out, and um, hopefully, if I do get all that done neatly yet, and I will probably yet put the ramp up on there tonight. So I decided, after all, to put them here behind the wood shop, keep the wood with the wood, for now and uh, I don't want to junk up in front of the trailer the idea today is I'm cleaning everything and I just cleaned up by the houses and the trailer again just fall clean up picking things up you know that putting away planters and pots and things that we're not going to be using now get ready for the winter now these pallets are going to be moved as well pretty soon here that pallet stack will be moved away I'm sure somebody's going to ask me if, if I'm doing this because I got in trouble or something nope doing it because I want to
there's nails in some of these and they're hanging on stuff on me. Now I think I want to stand these upright if I can. But that's bigger than I thought. I don't want to stick out too far this way. Oh, I need another pallet over this way. Wow. Wow. Well, let's see how far I get. I'm going to have to clean it up and put a pallet under there. It's funny because I just put that over there. Out of my way, in quotes. Funny, huh? I do not want to come out past the end of the, the wood shop. I just don't want to do that. I want to keep it here. I got no choice. I got to move that because I want to put another pallet down. I want to keep that secured and supported well. That's my deck. Okay, now, now I'm getting it done. I got, those are long boards. Those are heavy boards. Uh. This way they'll dry out better. Any that are heavy, like this one is heavy, it's wet. They'll dry out nicely for me to prepare for construction soon. And this way they'll keep straight. I just don't want to make a mess. I want to make this look neat, really. These are perfect for the porch. Absolutely perfect for the porch project. I'll be putting uprights underneath and cross bracing. I think there's just enough for that too. This one's broke so it's perfect for cross bracing. Oh, those are 21 footers. That's a lot of weight. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 of them. One's over by the garden. That's, that's a lot of weight. That's some serious stuff. But there's my porch. I got them last year. There was a cabin rebuild, and those were the, uh, the rafters of an extension on it. And uh, I got them for free. And I haven't got to the porch yet, but I'm gonna. Hopefully this year yet, but who knows. Winter's coming. The snow is coming. There now, I just got a few pieces of lumber to move. Some of which I've cut, and some which was there. And then uh, try to get my improvised roof up in the air. And check the time. It's going to get dark soon, but hopefully I can get this ramp done today. We'll see. Uh, I've got some scrap 2x6s, but uh, some of the 2x6 scrap I want to use on the frame of this. One of the long pieces is going to run across the, as a brace, this way. Let the tarp sort of drape off on the sides. I just want to have a rain stop so I could work when it's raining, because it's always raining. It won't take any snow load, and that's not my goal. I just want a rain stop. Uh, until I can uh, figure out where I'm going to put this permanently and build a shelter. 
I might keep it here. I don't know. It's a perfect spot right here. Uh, but I've really got to figure out and work with the town. Township said I could build a um, pole barn over the top of everything. <laughs> From here, across, to here. Build a pole barn over the sheds if I don't feel like moving my sheds. So I'm still trying to figure out how I can do that and still be compliant. So that's on hold. So like I said, for now it's going to be an improvised tarp. And uh, I want to build this frame. I wanted to put the mill sideways here between the buildings, but it just won't fit. It's, a, it's about a foot too long to fit between the buildings. So that's not going to happen, and I don't want to pull it up in front of the buildings. It's just not the, not the idea. And I don't want it behind the buildings for safety reasons, for security. Eventually I'm going to put a fence across the back anyway. That way anything that happens that comes on up in here has to come through the front yard, and I've got my cameras and everything. I don't know if you guys noticed, I've got security lights and cameras all over it in this area. I have to fix this one, but it's, it works. But I've got all kinds of security back here. And for good reason. This is far from the house and this has got to be protected. But anyway, um, here we are. So uh, I'm going to take a breather, clean up the rest of this wood, and possibly get this ramp done.